In this video, you're going to learn the difference between the time chronological sequence of the book of Revelation and the addition of information that's not chronological. If you can differentiate the chapters in which parts are actually unfolding more time and which parts are not, that is very helpful. We're going to look at the difference between the fifth and sixth seal and the difference between the sixth and seventh seal. Very, very interesting stuff. And thank you for your support and your donations. I appreciate that. Peace. Real quickly, it's very important if you want to learn about the book of Revelation to learn the difference between the chronological time that's unfolding in sequence and the overlay of more details. If you could discover which chapters are not really an extension of time per se, but it's actually an addition of details to complete the full vision that overlays on top of a chronological sequence, then you'll be able to understand the book of Revelation very, very well. Let's just do the seals, the trumpets, and the vials to show this and demonstrate this. You have seven seals. Six of them are chronological in time. The first four seals are coming in the picture of horses riding upon the earth. So we believe these are all simultaneously coming together, but it's the first phase in time that takes place in the unfolding of the sequence in the book of Revelation. Here come the four horses, the first four seals, and then when they are climactic and mature in fullness, we will see after that time has passed, we will see a time period for the fifth seal to come about. Here's the fifth seal. Now that's going to last about three and a half years. Debatable, debatable. But then that happens after this time period here. Then this time period has to go by, and after this time period takes place, we have the sixth seal opening up. The sixth seal is the end. It's the wrath of God. You would think the seventh seal is the end, but that's what we're learning today that the difference in these seals between the sixth seal and the seventh seal is that the seventh seal is not an extension of time it's a seven is the completion of the knowledge or the details that were left out during this part this is a quick overview in Revelation chapter 6 it starts with the beginning of sorrows where the horses come to full maximum and then we have the what Jesus says there would be great tribulation which happens here and then we have the end that comes which is God pouring his wrath upon the earth and that only goes to the wicked because by the time the sixth seal is open you see the islands and the mountains are disappearing the stars are falling from the sky and Christ is coming back as a lamb with wrath and he's coming down to the earth and that is the end in the sixth seal is the wrath of God. The seventh seal is not an extension of time after God comes down with the wrath because in the seventh seal what do we learn about? We learn about the trumpets and the vials. This information is overlaid on top of this information to give us details that were left out in the overview or summary of this quick snapshot. So the book of Revelation really is a vision that cannot be told in a literary form very easily. It has to go back and look, put more information and put more information and put more information and build into each chapter that comes along. And we continue to expand our understanding of what's really taking place. So starting in chapter 6, you have the overlay from the beginning of sorrows, the great tribulation, to the wrath of God, Jesus coming back to set up his kingdom, all wrapped up in one chapter. And then from chapter 7 to 19, we see in 19 he's coming back on a, a white horse to defeat the armies of the earth. And 7 starts to begin with the people that are going to actually be saved during this time. He tells us who's going to make it through all that. And in this seal is the trumpets and the vials and the trumpets of tribulation happen before the great tribulation point is over and the beginning of sorrows all the way up to great tribulation and the vials of wrath happens obviously only to the wicked 
in the six seal. Now, this is the overlay of time on top of time. It's not an extension of time. In fact, this isn't even about time. It has nothing to do with more time. It has to do with more information. That's what's interesting. That's what confuses people. The seven seals, only six of them are chronological in time. The seventh one is an overlay of information about the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, and all the wars, and the, the locusts, and all the stuff that happens. The trumpets, the vials, the wrath, is all poured on top of this part. So what I'm trying to tell you is the difference between the seals, one, two, three, four, five, the difference between those seals and seal six is the resurrection rapture. And the difference between seals one, two, three, four, five, six, and seal seven is that seal seven is no time. This is time. This is information, info, about what happens during that time. So it repeats the same time period in long, drawn out, detailed form. If you can accept that and receive that, you'll, when you open up the book of Revelation, you'll understand why we're reading about the Antichrist in chapter 13 over here, when the Antichrist is really over here in seal 5, killing everybody that disagrees with him. You'll understand why it's being talked about in chapter 13, when it's already, when seal 5 is the killing of everyone that disagrees with the Antichrist over here in chapter 6, right? You'll also understand how the wrath of God is poured out in the fall of Babylon in chapter 16 to 18, how that happens all the way over here when Christ is coming back in seal 6 to make war with the uh, people that are left behind who build armies to fight him as he's coming down. 19, he's coming down on a white horse. That's all included in seal 6. Seal 13, chapter 11, the two witnesses for three and a half years are attacked by the Antichrist. That's also taking place when? During the Great Tribulation period in seal 5. He's killing people. He can't kill the two witnesses because they're supernaturally protected until the end of the three and a half year period or 1260 days. But at the end of that he does get them. The woman who is protected for uh, in chapter 12, she's protected for how long? Three and a half years, or it's called 1260 days. She's protected during this time period. She's actually uh, the one that will be left alive. She'll be left alive. Paul says some will be left alive and at the resurrection rapture, that's, they'll be caught up alive. Well, the woman doesn't die. The two witnesses do. And the remnant of her seed in chapter 12 they actually died too. So they'll be persecuted in seal 5 over here. Seal 5. And then at the end of that persecution, at the end of that time of tribulation, at the seventh trumpet, trumpets of tribulation, when the seventh one blows, the resurrection rapture takes place, and all we have left is the sixth seal to open. And all that information is in chapters 16 to 19. That's all wrath. And uh, I hope that helps. I hope that's not too confusing. But uh, we're all learning and we're all seeking wisdom and truth. So thank you for your, uh, your donations and your love. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.